Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how we make our amazing red onion and tomato flatbread. This flatbread is very easy to make and is absolutely delicious. Now I'm making this one with an Italian theme using red onions, tomato and cheese. But the different toppings you can use on this flatbread are endless. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Okay, as always, I'll start by testing that my yeast is alive and well. First, add the sugar to the warm water and mix until dissolved. And now add your yeast to the water and give that a good mix too. Right, set that aside until it activates. If there's no change after 10 minutes, your yeast must be dead and it needs replacing. Right, it's 10 minutes later and as you can see, my yeast is nice and frothy and looking very healthy. Once again, due to my dodgy hand, I'm using my stand mixer for this one, but you can easily hand knead this dough if you wish. Now add your olive oil to the bowl. Next to go in is the flour. In goes the salt, followed by the garlic granules. You can also use garlic powder if you wish. First job is to bring the dough together using the dough hook. Also, I'd like to point out that this batch will yield four large flatbreads. If that's a bit too much for you, feel free to cut the recipe in half. And once the dough is together, scrape down the sides of the bowl. Right, I'll set my machine away on medium speed until I have a soft, smooth dough. This normally takes 7 to 8 minutes. I'll set my timer away on count-up mode so you can see exactly how long it takes. And this is what it looks like after 5 minutes. Right, I've reached the 7 minute mark and I'd say that's enough kneading for this one. It's pulling away from the sides of the bowl and looks very smooth. So, time to get it out. Scrape the dough out onto the bench. Now this dough should be quite easy to handle, but if you're a bit worried about that, simply add a little oil to your hands and it definitely won't stick. Now form the dough into a ball. Place the dough ball into a lightly oiled bowl Cover the bowl, now I like to use a shower cap for this. Now set it aside in a nice warm spot for 45 minutes. Okay, that's the time up on this one and only proof in this recipe. As you can see, mine has risen nicely. Before turning the dough out, give the bench a good dusting of flour. Now I often get asked what type of flour do I use for dusting. I simply use my cheapest plain or all-purpose flour for mine. Right, turn out the dough and knock it back. That simply means force all of the built up gas out of it. Form the dough into a ball again. Now if your measurements were correct at the beginning of the recipe, your finished dough should now weigh 1050 grams. That's 37 ounces. Right, all I've got to do now is simply divide the dough into four equal pieces. Always best to use scales, guys. Not preaching, just saying. I'll put two of mine aside and complete those off camera. And the first job is to pre-shape the pieces of dough. Start by forming them into a ball. Now with the palm of your hand, roll them into an oval shape. Once the oval shapes have been formed, let them relax for 10 minutes. This will make it so much easier to roll them out later. OK, that 10 minute rest period is up. Place one on the floured surface and start rolling it out with your rolling pin. 
after a few rolls it will tighten up and won't go any further. You need to let them relax again for a minute or two before beginning again. Ignore videos where you see them roll out the door in one go. It simply doesn't work that way. It takes around three to four attempts to get to the final size. Okay, that's mine done and it took about four attempts on each one. And in real time it only took about six minutes. It doesn't quite look it in the video, but these are about 16 by 8 inches, that's 40 by 20 centimetres, so quite large. You can of course make yours any size you like. For example, you could make lots of small ones, as they freeze beautifully. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 5. Place each dough onto a lightly greased baking tray and straighten them out. The size of the trays that I'm using are on screen. Time to get the toppings on these beautiful flatbreads. Like I said earlier, I'm using an Italian theme, but you can put on what you like. I'm going to start mine with a thin layer of my homemade chilli oil. Now this is just a very mild chilli oil, but it does give the finished bread a wonderful background spicy warmth. I will be making a shorts video on how to make this chilli oil in the near future. Next is a very thin coat of a tomato based sauce, and I mean a thin coat. You don't want this looking or tasting like a pizza, just enough to give a hint of flavour and moisture. Time to add some thinly sliced half rings of red onions. Once again, not too much, try to keep it subtle. And now a sprinkling of whatever cheese you like. I'm using a little cheddar. And for a bit of contrast, I'm going to use a little red Leicester too. The final main ingredient is some thin cut slices of these beautiful vine tomatoes. Right, I'll finish off with seasoning. A little cracked black pepper and a sprinkling of semi-coarse sea salt. Before they go into the oven, prick around the edge of the dough with a fork. This will stop the edges from rising too much when baking. I'll do the other one off camera. Right, get them into the preheated oven and set your timer for 15 minutes. This next step is optional. When there's about three minutes left, stop the timer, quickly take them out of the oven and onto a wire rack. Now give them a light grating of parmesan. This just takes these to another level. When you get them back into the oven, make sure you swap them top to bottom for even cooking. If you added the parmesan at the start of the recipe, it would just go dark and bitter in the oven. Now shut the oven door and restart your timer. And while those delicious flatbreads are finishing off, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Right guys, these amazing flatbreads are finished baking and it's time to get them out. And they're looking absolutely mouthwatering. And the aroma in this kitchen is out of this world. <laughs> Not finished yet. I like to add a little more of that chilli oil around the crust. Not only does this add a little more warmth to the recipe, it also makes the bread look very appetising. And also I'll garnish them with a little chopped basil or parsley. Wonderful. Right, I'll be back in a moment for a taste. Now you can serve these straight from the oven. Or you can let them cool and soften up a bit, either way they're outstanding. 
on a different level to store-bought flatbreads. Okay, straight in for a bite or two. The only way you'll know how good these are is if you try them yourself. Absolutely delicious, guys. Quick, simple, relatively cheap and delicious. They tick all the boxes. A huge thumbs up for these, everyone. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Dermot Sloan, Steve Pickwizard, Luke Skywalker, Andy Williams, Jens K3250, Claramast8733, Sakura62 Leo, Artemis Bene Gesserit, and Kathy and George Stevens7504. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.